too has worked very hard to convert this crisis into an opportunity. And you would have seen significant improvement in business than the pre-COVID level. Our team have worked tirelessly using advanced techniques to reach out to profitable regions to overcome these testing times, emerging victorious over all the challenging challenges posed. This quarter has been the best ever performance in terms of top line and profitability in Q3 of any year, both for the Indian and European operations. At an organizational level, we have been extremely agile to adapt our businesses to the current environment in innovative ways to maximize the opportunity. This was made possible by the hard work of our employees, as I mentioned, and with the aid of new age technologies and methods such as smart digital systems, business intelligence platforms, heat maps, pin code wise customer tracking, and tech for acquisition of new customers, daily review processes, rigorous cost saving measures, and many more. We greatly leverage technology to boost our performance and optimize processes. Implementing an end-to-end -end connect digital shop flow, IoT 4.0 across many of our plants, along with integrated robotic process automation have helped us immensely in this endeavor. And our systems that have now become an integral part of our organization. Additionally, our Lean Six Sigma model and the zero-based costing that we adopted at the start of lockdown to reorganize the organizational structure and cost have also strengthened HIL fundamentally. It won't be out of place to mention here that we, as one HIL family, have all contributed in different ways towards the business performance. As a result, we saw a growth of 38% year-on-year in the consolidated revenue for the quarter, EBITDA grew from 47 crores in quarter three FY20 to 107 crores in this quarter, which netting a growth rate of 129%. Q3 is a seasonally weak quarter for roofing segment. However, it has done very well despite the seasonality and the current situation due to the pandemic. Strong rural demand has been instrumental in boosting this segment. We have successfully improved the market share by 150 basis points in the, in the first nine months and added 700 new retail counters in potent zones. Our products have, are driven by innovation and Chamina Fortune, our new investment-based roofing solution is a prime example of that. Even though the offering has established in the market, our R&D teams continue to work on improving the product by means of optimizing its cost and enhancing the product quality. We have already launched a new variant of this product called Humid Cure, and a dedicated new manufacturing facility is now operational in Faridabad. Our roofing product enjoys healthy price realization, and based on that, we are hopeful of a better H2 FY21 as compared to H2 FY20. Building solution segment two is on an upward trajectory with economic activities returning to the previous level, especially with the real estate sector in tier one cities showing a gradual revival. Despite a subdued recovery in the tier one city real estate activities, we continue to operate in newer markets of tier two and tier three towns, as well as where we have done well in the previous quarter in quarter three. It gives us pleasure to share with you that your company has shown a growth in the top line from Q3 FY20 despite a severe challenge. Our innovative strategy of catering to labor hutments and COVID centers has supported a strong business in this segment. We have also ensured that no compromise were made on profitability. The pipes and footy segment has witnessed strong growth in Q3 with strong demand for our brand. Raising prices have firmed up over the past 
few months, translating into a favorable impact on business. Additionally, high volume have helped us minimize the cost effectively to work We have We are confident of meeting the robust demand for this product on a pan-India basis, having enhanced our distribution network and presence across India, and have ample capacity to meet our endeavor. With Christmas, Q3 is a seasonally weak quarter in Europe due to holidays, but performance of Parador has been extremely good. As committed to you earlier, we are relentlessly working as a team towards enhancing profitability and improving the business model. We complement our Parador team for sustaining a good performance while the business around them face severe headwinds, especially for international markets owing to COVID pandemic. We are among very few flooring companies which have grown both in top line and bottom line over the last year. Our e-business online brand store focus on DIY and brand strategies, which we started implementing last year, have been impeccable and delivered results this financial year. As COVID situation improves further, we will actively resume our work on expanding Parador into newer geographies as promised earlier. Our team efforts have continued taking HR amongst the top few manufacturing organizations in India as for great place to work declaration recently. To conclude, I would like to say that HIL has overcome all the hurdles posed by these times on the back of our resilient teams that work every day to improve the various aspects of the business, maintaining its status as a market leader. As an organization, we continue to deliver our business on quality, innovation, sustainability, and business excellence. We are confident that the coming quarters would be even better. Thank you very much for your patience hearing. I would now like to hand over the discussion to my CFO, Mr. K. Virappan, to take us through the specific numbers. Virappan, over to you. Thank you, Dhiru. Good morning, all. I would like to wish a happy new year to everyone, and thank you all for joining us on the call today. I'll be taking you all through the financial and operating highlights of the business during Q3 and 9 months of 521. The company's operational and financial performances are better than the pre-COVID levels, with the ongoing pandemic situation improving and the lifting of the lockdown. Thanks to our dedicated and hardworking teams, we have been able to redefine our business model and successfully convert this crisis into an opportunity. The roofing solution business grew by 33%, 34% year-on-year during the quarter and 15% year-on-year on a nine-month basis, despite a seasonably weak quarter. Reaching to newer geographies and digital connect with the customers have helped to increase our market share in this business considerably. Building Solutions has recorded a quarter-on-quarter -quarter improvement of 25% for the quarter and by 4% year-on-year. We are happy to see this business back on track and making steady progress. Polymer Solutions business grew 83% year-on-year during Q3 and 37% year-on-year in the nine months. The passion displayed by the team in expanding the channel network has resulted in significant growth for this business. The capacity utilization has been improving constantly across all segments for us. While we remain focused on minimizing our costs and maximizing margins, we are exploring opportunities to add capacity for certain segments. Parador completed a smooth acquisition and integration last year. This year, it has integrated our Six Sigma model, zero-based costing, and lean manufacturing processes very well, and the impact is clear to see in the company's improving profitability and cash flow. The consolidated EBITDA from continuing operation came in at Rs. 107 crore for Q3 compared to Rs. 47 crore in Q3 FI20, and Rs. 312 crore from Rs. 200 crore for the respective nine months period. During this quarter, the consolidated PAC increased to Rs. 53 crore from Rs. 9 crore and has grown by 506% year-on-year. For nine months FI21, it came in at Rs. 152 crore, growing by 99% year-on-year. In nine months FI21, we have surpassed the PBT and PAC numbers of nine months FI20, showing how robust operations have been this financial year. Having tracked the 
economic conditions closely. We do not anticipate any major impact on our carrying quantities of inventory, intangible assets, trade receivables, investments, or any financial assets. We have a very stable and robust liquidity position, ensuring a relatively smoother sailing in these times. We have ensured that we make the best of the opportunities available through various measures. Both HIL in India and Paradox enjoyed healthy cash flows during the quarter. Debt equity ratio stands at 0.52x as compared to 1.0 as on 31st March 2020. The long-term borrowings were further reduced by Rs. 23 crore in the quarter, resulting in a total reduction, debt reduction of Rs. 241 crore for the nine months under challenging circumstances due to COVID uncertainties. The long-term debt in India stood at Rs. 94 crore. We expect to prepay majority of this debt during Q4 FI21. As you all are aware, as you all are aware that we had borrowed Rs. 272 crore in India two years ago for the acquisition of Paradox. We have repaid majority of this debt by now, and by end of this financial year, we would have fully repaid this loan against the original plan of repayment in five years. The net worth of the company has improved to Rs. 961 crore at the end of December 20 from Rs. 743 crore as on 31st March 20. The EPS from continuous operation came in at Rs. 202.57, having grown by 99% year on year in the nine months period. We constantly strive to maximize our profitability and in turn boost returns for investors. I'm happy to conclude that this has been an exceptional quarter for HIR. With this, I would like to conclude my opening remarks. I request the moderator to open the floor for questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Baidik Sarkar from Unify Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, gentlemen, good morning and uh, many congratulations on the phenomenal set of numbers, especially given the environment in Germany and India. Uh, Mr. Chaudhary, my question is, how does one gauge these numbers between being a one-time pent-up phenomena uh, versus organic salience of rural demand? And uh, do we, in some configuration, run the risk of witnessing a very high base effect for the next year and, in effect, making the FY22 numbers uh, look bad than they actually are? Mr. Sarkar, thank you very much for your uh, appreciation and thank you for your question. Mr. Sarkar, I would say if someone says they know next year very well, uh, I am not one of them. We would definitely anticipate next year to be as tough as we had anticipated this year to be. But I'm, I can consciously contribute by saying you have a team in your company which will make every difficult situation to its benefit. This year also we started off with a lot of uh, concerns, but the numbers have been reasonably good as you yourself said. Next year also we'll make the best over these numbers. I can come back to you. As far as your question of how much of this is pent-up demand, yes, there was a pent-up demand after everything opened up and uh, we don't want to shy away from saying yes, it was there, but more than the demand, HIL made a good benefit of it. And thereby you can see for roofing, for instance, as I mentioned, while the demand came up, HIL has gained far more market share and the differential today between HIL and anyone else has only widened because we have been able to take share far in advance. Building materials uh, was tough and therefore there wasn't a pent-up demand at all on that and we aren't seeing any uh, at, at the moment as well, but we have gone into greener pastures and taken businesses which were never supposed to be ours or where we had not focused earlier. So the business team has, uh, uh, you know, completely innovated themselves and moved to pastures where they felt earlier possibly that the business was not there, but they have been able to search out business back to in advanced terms and therefore, and good profitability, and therefore that business has sustained very well. And uh, falling out, of course, there is a slight benefit that you would see this year, as I mentioned in my opening remarks, because of 
the uh, raw material price that Reliance has continuously improved, and everyone has got benefit of that. But the growth that we have achieved in polymer is, uh, though small base, but it has it is definitely much much higher than anyone else, and we are absolutely on track. Uh, for our goals, uh, long-term goals on polymer. So, and Parador, I mean, look, the entire model was changed. So I won't say it is anything to do with pent up demand. There was a certain bit of it in Germany for sure, Mr. Sarkar, where people were in Germany were not going for holidays and they were spending more for renovations of their homes and that demand was there. But none of the flooring manufacturers could utilize this. We did it because we had gone into online brand store, we had gone into e-business, we had rendered in Europe, which is very difficult, of point-to-point um, uh, -point shipment. So we were supplying to customers individually to their home from our factories, which is very rare in European companies. Uh, and we had uh, taken all those leads last year itself and last to last year itself. So last year, actually, it got benefited during the COVID situation. So this should continue, uh, I would think, even next year. Therefore, yes, we have got benefited by using this calamity to our benefit this year and we will continue to do that and reinvent ourselves as the situation becomes tougher your company will continue to perform uh, that's that's very exhaustive so thank you and, and that answers a lot of my follow-up questions if i may just end with one more uh, i remember from a previous conversations that uh, the r d initiatives of uh, charmin are uh, coming to an end by the end of march this year and uh, in effect neutralizing uh, the cost of asbestos uh, free sheets uh, to parity with where the pricing is today uh, and that could be a huge opportunity at the consolidating market share any updates on how we're progressing there so r and has done wonderfully well uh, to reduce the cost. Uh, we had a slight uh, uh, negative impact um, in one way uh, because we had shifted the fiber to Brazil, back to Brazil. And, uh, uh, you know, the, the exact type of fiber or the higher end fiber that we wanted to bring from Brazil was not available because they had limited uh, uh, permissions for, for taking out the fiber. Uh, but R&D has worked, and so last quarter you would see our margin was slightly more uh, down um, on AC sheet uh, because uh, we have lost a little bit of money owing to higher uh, fiber utilization. But R&D has worked out a very good systematic process around it, and from quarter one next year we'll start getting benefits. The cost of fiber in Brazil is substantially lower by what is being offered by Russians and, uh, and Kazakh. Therefore, we we'll continue buying from Brazil and the benefit truly will come next year in quarter one. And just a bookkeeping question for Mr. Uh So how should we look at leverage playing out in the India business by the end of next year? I think we've generated enough free cash to completely neutralize over the next 12, 15 months. So your thoughts on leverage? Sir, in India? So we have brought down Sorry, to five. Yes. Hello, we have brought on to point five, and uh, we expect that to continue. So it's not going to be more than that. Yeah. Okay, so 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 the prospect of complete deleveraging may not culminate. Uh, uh, is what you're saying. We will continue to carry a certain amount of leverage. Yeah, there will be some growth. No, there will be some growth opportunities. So uh, it cannot be made to complete zero. Sure, appreciate that. So, Thank uh, you very much. Mr. Sarkar, Mr. Yeah. Sarkar yeah. the long-term debt will be continuously reduced by us, and at the moment, as it stands, it's at about 90 odd crore, which will reduce by another 50 crore by the end of this uh, quarter. So that's our biggest focus. The custom loans are all, again, for some capital. We don't have a concern on that. Paradol loans are at very low rates, and they are even getting prepaid by Paradol because of uh, excess cash that is getting generated there. So that's not our concern. If there are good opportunities to invest further, we will uh, invest and we'll come to you at that. No, sir. Thank you so much for best wishes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Vora from PCS Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, uh, gentlemen. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you for taking my question and many congratulations on a great show. Uh, congrats to the team of Agile. Uh, my question is on uh, the Umicure technology. If you can give some more color on what could be the potential from here on and uh, how, when is it that we look at it that it, utilization reaches uh, optimum level? Hello, Anujji. Thank you so much for your question and thanks for your appreciation. Um, uh, on Kamina Fortune, let me tell you very transparently where we are. Um, I would 
take a pause and say, yes, we have taken a little more time than I had anticipated in developing this uh, technology. I'll tell you where. Uh, we had a first indication of developing a product which can completely uh, de-risk us in case asbestos goes out of the market. That we developed very well through the autoclave mechanism, and that product was, was fantastic, but slightly expensive uh, because it was using autoclave plus there was less possibility of generating higher volumes of that because autoclave had a particular restriction. So you can only add a finite number of autoclaves, say four of them. It can only deliver about 150 metric ton a day. So there were all these limitations that we have, which also compounded to the cost of this product. So while the product was great and is great, the cost was very, very high. So R&D continuously worked then so towards making another product of Phoenix here, uh, which is far lesser, uh, you know, sensitive to uh, all of this because it doesn't use autoclave. So you can virtually make this product um, uh, uh, from any of the factories with a small capex uh, uh, using non asbestos uh, material. Uh, so this product is now at uh, a very ripe stage of R&D development and production. We have already seeded 1,000 crores, 1,000 metric ton of this product in the market. Uh, we were constrained because we didn't have a, a clear manufacturing facility. Uh, we only had to use part-time facility from our South Kondapuri plant. But now that we have a full-fledged manufacturing facility in Faridabad, which is a brand new uh, head of the art line, uh, this uh, development will take even further pace. The whole idea of developing Fortune Phoenix here is that the cost will be lower, the strength will be higher, um, even higher than uh, autoclave, and uh, therefore this will have a far better reach in the market. And I'm bullish that at the moment the capacity is 60,000 metric tons in Faridabad new line. I'm bullish in the next couple of years we'll be able to go further. Uh, thank you. That, that's quite helpful. Uh, the second thing is on our ad spends. Uh, have they come back to the normalcy, whether it was on digital platform or... Uh, you know, other B uh, modes, have they come to normal C or uh, we are still holding back some of them? Um, so B, you're talking about the marketing spend, am I right? Yes, yes, absolutely, yes, yes. Yeah, so this year, uh, holistically, we have taken a call to keep it at a bare minimum and we have done that miraculously well. Um, quarter four, we will uh, spend, start spending a little bit uh, on BCL. We have not decided to go big way on ACL at all. There will be no synergy with any more cricket and uh, IPLs and all, which were big ticket items last, uh, uh, you know, two years before last year. Uh, so we are not going to get back to that in a hurry. So therefore, the uh, the marketing spend will be bare minimum as much as is needed for regular business uh, upkeep. Okay, uh, last question and then I'll jump back in the queue, queue is uh, what would be our approximate uh, CAPEX plan for uh, uh, next year? Well, um, I would like to answer that question a few months later once I'm ready with the budget. But yes, there will be some investment that I propose to bring in for building manufacturing solutions by adding new CAPEX for block panels and boards uh, because we are 100% uh, full up on the capacity and the business has come back to normal speed from December or November as of last year. We have uh, we have grown last quarter as we have seen. Uh, this quarter also should be uh, reasonably well, and therefore we have to add capacity. Profitability has gone up in this uh, segment, and there is good reason for adding capacity. That will be one capacity that we will definitely look at. The exact numbers can be told to you as soon as we are ready with them. And... Uh, uh, other than that, the, no big ticket item is being planned at the moment, but all of this will be met by our cash flow, so there should be a problem. Fantastic. Uh, all the best. I'll jump back in the queue. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ritika Gupta from Equitas Investment. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, sir. Congratulations on a fantastic set of numbers. So my first question is pertaining to the roofing segment. If you could give us um, how has the industry grown in this quarter and what was HIL's volume growth? Hi, uh, Ms. Gupta. Very nice to talk to you again. Thank you for your question. 
Um, the routing segment after uh, muted Q1 has uh, grown in Q2 and Q3 in the market. Um, but uh, on a nine-month basis, they are still at uh, basically the same levels as last year, maybe a 1% growth. We have definitely grown in this market on a quantity basis. Uh, we have uh, volume basis, we have grown 20%. And on a revenue basis, we have grown 34% over last year, last quarter, which means the prices have been better than last year, same quarter in Q3. Um, and, and market share wise, we have gained market share 150 basis point, And the differential between us and anyone uh, others has only grown, therefore. Um, so you mentioned that in quarter three, our volume growth was 20%. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, so regarding raw material prices, you did mention that next year our fiber prices would be lower since we would be sourcing from Brazil. But in general, how do we expect our raw material prices to be trending as cement and other raw materials are also looking upwards? Raw material prices is a perennial uh, problem in this division, but uh, the team has found ways to handle it every year after year for so our uh, raw material uh, consumption rates are kept neutral or rather uh, efficient by the R&D intervention. Uh, our biggest challenge apart from fiber is fly ash and cement. And I'm saying even though fly ash as a percentage uh, is lower in the total raw material, it is having a severe impact because of both availability. Uh, the power plants are getting switched off, switched on due to lower power demand in the country. And uh, in some of our factories, we are facing this problem plus the cost, because then we have to go to other uh, power plants and get the fiber, which is leading to a higher transportation cost. Um, cement is a uh, concern uh, every one of us are knowing, and I think South, the, their lobby is very strong. Uh, prices are extremely uh, uh, huge there. So those concerns will continue to remain, but I think the market realizes it. We have seen a good NSR contribution this year, raising NSR because of these costs. Um, and therefore, the profitabilities have gone up. Um, we continue to hope that, uh, you know, uh, with the market looking up next year because the monsoons have been great last year and farmers are getting their benefits from the government in various aspects. I hope that next year the market will be great for roofing and we will be able to continue this profitable mode for roofing. Okay, so my next question is pertaining to the polymer division. So would the revenue break up between uh, putty and the pipes be 50% in quarter three? Yes, more or less there. Okay, and if you could give us what were the inventory gains that we enjoyed in the pipes division in quarter three, if that's possible. Inventory gains? Yeah, we would have uh, gains from uh, as the resin prices forming up, right? Yeah, so I mean, while the prices were firming up, the market was not giving us that kind of prices. Uh, so market was slower to realize the NSRs uh, than the raw material price firming up. That I'm sure you found in the market. We had uh, done certain uh, strategic planning for the material and tried to uh, find ways of getting it um, competitive. And that has definitely helped us in the overall profitability. Okay. Um, in the building solutions division, we had record EBITDA, EBIT margins uh, this quarter. Do we see them sustaining going forward or do we see any improvement? Our building solution is the only segment where uh, growth will be more driven by selling price increase uh, because we have reached our uh, prime capacity there. Uh, we have uh, flawed um, in setting up new capacities, uh, which should have been ideally done last uh, a bit financially early, because we took a pause due to COVID, not knowing where it's going to go. Um, so uh, yes, uh, that segment growth in top line would come more from uh, getting your market from better regions, which gives us better NSRs, and therefore I assume that the profitability definitely will continue to go. We have also cheaped out uh, cost base immensely in this segment. And that should continue for us. 
Okay. Um, so regarding Parado, so I wanted to know, uh, we've not had much volume growth as our capacity utilization has been hovering around the 70% levels. So have our realizations grown considerably and what is the reason for that? Yeah, um, to be fair, and let's give this in, that Europe really faced a severe COVID. And amidst that, the international borders were all seized. Markets like China, Middle East, uh, United States, uh, Australia, they were severely down on commercial sector, which is our uh, export market. So we could not do much on that. Therefore, the volume growth in Parador has happened and has come from uh, product mix uh, that we have uh, improved. So we have gone through the R&D route. I mentioned this earlier, and uh, it's good to remind everyone that Paradox changes their product 50% uh, of the revenue every three years to R&D contribution. And we have come out with this wonderful Modulo One product, which is uh, really um, uh, you know helpful to feed in the market with higher realization, and the customers are loving this. Um, this has a much far better uh, appeal with the customers, and we have grown in Modular One over last year by 72%, uh, and um, having a better high price realization. So this has all helped, plus the cost reduction that we have to lean uh, Six Sigma, as well as uh, you know our cost drive, like we have done in HL India. All of that has contributed to a better profitability. Okay. And so my last question. So um, you've done fantastically well for the company in the last three or four years. Even your acquisition of Parador was really good. So what kind of vision do you have for the company for the next five years? Um, uh, I'm sure all of you uh, as owners of HIL must be eyeing HIL to be uh, one stop building manufacturing company uh, and that's exactly the aim I also share with all of you. So our attempt has been to uh, de-risk us from asbestos, which means while we increase asbestos um, business, we increase other businesses so that the share of asbestos comes down. Uh, when I joined the company, I think for your class, we were about 50, 70 percent asbestos dependent. Now we are only about 30 percent asbestos dependent. That's one aspect. So we're growing in other products. Um, I have a very, very high aspiration for for you and your and your organization to take up with polymers uh, for uh, for Paradon and uh, while continuing in building and uh, roofing segments. Uh, plus, add any other uh, intelligent acquisition that may come through. So. Uh, we will uh, yeah. pause this at the moment for any further acquisition, but uh, we have that dream is very much there. HIL wants to become a $1 billion by 2025. That's the internal target for each of our employees. And I think uh, we are taking all actions towards making HIL a one stop building solution, $1 billion, uh, top line by 2025. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to the participants, please limit your question to two per participants only. The next question is from the line of Anish Chapalia from Banyan Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, good morning. I uh, hope my uh, voice is audible. And uh, congratulations. Absolutely clear, uh, Anish. Good morning to you. Yeah, yeah hi. Uh, congratulations for a great set of performance. Uh, so I had a question on the routine solution. Uh, so, uh, in the routine solution business, sir, uh, what is the split between, uh, I mean, or, or not, uh, what is the split between the residential and commercial real estate? And what is the strategy to increase our penetration in the commercial uh, real estate part, uh, if at all we have one? Roofing is B2C primarily, and the roofing segment is all about retail uh, through to the uh, Tier three rural, tier three and uh, towns and rural cities. So, I think uh, roofing does. We don't monitor it back. We don't do too enough of B two B institutional business because many of the big institutions have gone away from asbestos. So, roofing is primarily, um, uh, you know, for the B two C uh, rural sector. 
so when i mean commercial so i mean you know the manufacturing facilities being set up you know those kind of uh, opportunity so uh, one should just think about uh, roofing solutions as a b2c and that to the rural construction housing right i mean is that right to think about this or uh, we also cater to the manufacturing facilities being set up and uh, we have an increment of opportunities to gain market share no so we don't supply to manufacturing facilities as much with uh, as best as because very few customers uh, want it but that's where chamina fortune comes in which is the non asbestos and many of the chemical plants uh, are taking this product for their manufacturing facility because there's big erosion climate there and steel doesn't hold good um, so that's the manufacturing part which is being catered by our non asbestos facility okay uh, so in in our roofing solutions our revenues have over at a uh, annual rate of around 850 crores uh, in the last four years uh, bearing fy20 uh, and this year also we are you know likely to do a similar revenue uh, rate uh, more or up uh, a little bit here and there but do you think that uh, given the tailwinds that you have been seeing in fy21 increase in the market share and other initiatives that you know you have already spoken about Uh, that this business can now deliver a sustained growth on this 850 crore base uh, for 22 onwards, or uh, we we think that uh, uh, the growth, I mean, the numbers would go around this uh, for the foreseeable future. I mean, how are you thinking about the overall growth? Let Let me answer your question in two ways. One is the market for asbestos. Market for asbestos is highly cyclic. and is dependent on the monsoons of the earlier year so if there is good monsoon and good harvest uh, for the farmers and cash availability is there with them higher and therefore the spend is higher the subsequent year uh, i definitely see next year again the business will be very good because the rains have been very good uh, 2020 and uh, even the harvest all their uh, products or harvest have been very good plus cash has been made available by government through various initiatives and i think all of it will help the rural sector so that's about the asbestos market therefore i definitely see asbestos market will grow next year as well um, over even this year's growth um, our growth will in the next two years um, uh, our growth will start coming from the non asbestos in a big way that's where the new capacity in faridabad has been added because that's the segment which will not cater to the rural sector alone it will cater mainly to the institutional sector um, and there we will go head on with steel and uh, we will take away market from them that's exactly how we are doing in the rail base is highly appreciative of our product we are buying in big numbers we are also selling to a lot of industries as i mentioned chemical industries and industries which are near the uh, near the um, uh, you know saline atmosphere in in saline atmospheres uh, are using this product more and more as we become more efficient in this product with the humid cure costs come down further this business will take up further so yeah our growth in uh, in the roofing segment will come from uh, all of this plus we are now looking at increasing new products in this sector using our retail spread Uh, which could be in the construction chemical wing, it could be in the sanitation wing, it could be even uh, looking at uh, in a small way bringing in paint, uh, uh, you know, as as an element into this segment, you know. Uh, so all of that is being looked at by the company so that we are able to grow utilizing our extensive reach. Okay, uh, wonderful. uh this one last question in the building solution side uh, i just wanted to again understand the uh, tilt between the residential and the commercial part and you know with the government trust on setting up the uh, domestic manufacturing facilities to pli atmanipur etc so is this business likely to see tailwinds over the next few years uh, it will it will answer is yes and uh, we have uh, uh, we we were highly exposed to uh, commercial sector earlier but covid has taught us to have a meaningful contribution to all sectors and i think that has taught the business to be extremely agile uh, and uh, uh, and look at wherever the business comes from so we will get a tailwind definitely in this business and we are very hopeful that um, this business will continue to do well and therefore we are now uh, seriously looking at expanding this business further
Okay, I will come back in the queue for more questions. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to the participants again: please limit your question to two per participant only. The next question is from the line of Bharat Sage from Quest Investment. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Congratulations this upon your team, I mean, on a stellar performance. So, on this roofing solution, just to get your sense, since we have started commercial uh, factory, I mean, and we are talking of humid cure to, I mean, make it. this product more efficient as well as so how at what stage of i mean this whole progression we are and as you rightly said because the economic benefit of charminar fortune vis-a-vis -vis still roofing which can open up a big industrial uh, application so if you can give some sense i mean from 2 3 year perspective Uh, very kind of you. First of all, for your appreciation, that it means a lot to me and the team. Um, uh, so far as Chamina uh, Fortune is concerned, I mentioned to you our first priority was to have a product in place so that in case asbestos is switched off by Indian Correct. government for some reason or the other, we would be the only company having this product. So that was established to the auto phase, but now R and D has come out with Humid Cure, which will be far more economical and much more robust. So. There'll be higher strength, almost equivalent to AC sheet, uh, as well as the sheet, which is what the customers normally like to see. And therefore, that product is uh, we are uh, we are very consciously uh, getting the IPs done all around. That we are getting into IPs for uh, nearing countries as well. In next two three years time, a hundred crore or more is definitely on the cards, and we'll see how to expand this product further into institutions. But this product will be. the only product in the country in case as this is switched off tomorrow and in case everyone is then pushed to the wall to supply non as best this product then we'll be the only company which can make this product from any of our factories all the six factories that we have uh, uh, with very small gestation time uh, there'll be small capex uh, that will be needed in each of the factories and then we can ramp up the facility in every factory so this is Uh, supporting us both from a sustainability point of view as well as from a point of getting additional business from institutional segments. Fair. And second, I mean, with that we are in competitive or economic sense for I mean, user industry. I mean, how economically this is including setting up cost, durability, as well as the aesthetic look, uh, where color sheet, I mean, steel sheet, lot of are available in pre-colored. So. if you can give some sense on that aspect also uh, absolutely so uh, i've given a price context last time i'll repeat that again for every one of you um if asbestos is x steel is 2x uh, when it comes to total cost perspective we want to bring non asbestos between the two uh, preferably around 1.5x uh, so that it's far economical than steel and more expensive than asbestos for sure but we do not want to cannibalize asbestos market in rural sector kind of the same space we'll go for the institution that point number 1 point number 2 is from a productivity point of view it will become very good once we have stabilized this humid cure because then you don't need autoclave so therefore the efficiency will be higher and point number 3 is we have a colored variant in this and which is absolutely aesthetically as good as any colored uh, alternatives that the market has and therefore we are confident that we'll be able to place this at par and better than steel because steel would have a life of 10 10 years 12 years this will have a 70 75 years life steel can get corroded this won't get corroded steel can get punctured and there can be a hole this won't steel steel has a heat and sound uh, a problem uh, this won't have this is highly insulated material so all those benefits will come with it and with the color variant this will be fantastic i can uh, ask someone to send you some brochures on this which gives you the color options and they are fantastic okay great on now taking on this uh, parador see we have done wonderfully where in this challenging time and europe was a more i mean uh, affected in q3 But still, we have been able to do much better. You explain as well as improve the margin. So where we are in expansion of geographically for sustainable growth and sustainable EBIT margin that we are looking. I mean, now with this expansion, further improvement is possible or not? 
101% answer is yes. Uh, we have got a slight setback with the international circuit because of COVID, sir. This was not our uh, aim, but this has happened because the um, boundaries were sealed. People just couldn't travel, and uh, all the commercial activities, whether you talk of big hotels or malls or everything, in different parts of the world, they were absolutely at standstill. Therefore, there was no way that we could have sold Parador to the international market. Uh, given it to a normal base in any European company and in any other flooring company except Parador in Europe, you would see the business has completely collapsed because they did not know how to still continue the business uh, in Europe while everything was closed down. What we had done last year was migrated from a three-layer status of a distributor and then retailer and then consumer to a DIY structure where you are supplying the material to do it yourself stores. And then we went into e-business and we went, went into online brand store for Parador. Okay. All of that was put in, uh, in 2019 and 2020 we've seen that that has all benefited uh, one, when COVID came and Parador has sustained and done better than the previous year, last year, only on account of all these initiatives that they have. Now, when the market, this quarter, uh, they are facing a bit of a challenge uh, because of uh, COVID situation in Europe, but they are still managing very well. I'm very hopeful that as soon as COVID uh, vaccines are through and uh, things return, uh, you would see the growth. You would see the growth in China. China, incidentally, amid all these challenges, China JV is growing uh, this Great. year over last year. Um, and uh, we have grown immensely in Nordic countries uh, where we have acquired several new customers. We have grown in Spain, we have grown in France, we have grown in uh, uh, Netherlands. Um, uh, UK has been slightly muted, again, because of high COVID cases. But we've grown in Europe immensely. Now we will grow in international markets as soon as COVID relaxes. My dream and your dream of taking Paradox to the new level doesn't get diluted at all. It may have been slightly um, uh, dented because of COVID, but it's not going to go away at all. Paradox will grow, and Paradox will grow profitably. So, I mean, sir, will there be once the international market become again more, so because of logistic cost as well as the uh, uh, intermediary involvement, currently what we are more or less like doing B2C, so get some kind of impact on the EBIT margin? No, no, no. I don't believe it at all. Okay. See, sir, I've always said this and I'm repeating, we will not do anything in HIL which compromises profitability. The growth in HIL will come profitable and that's, a, uh, that's an underwritten statement that I'm telling you. There were a lot of concerns earlier by all of us uh, all of you as well, because of Paradox, because you're not sure whether that's the right acquisition we have done. I was sanguine, I was confirmed, I was very sure, and we are moving exactly in that direction. Pro the profitability will be even further enhanced in Paradox because you would be able to use the base um, load by increasing the sales. So in Europe, the fixed cost is very high in any companies, and that will get equated over a bigger base once the revenue grows up. So Parador profitability, which we took Parador at 7%, EBITDA now is hovering much more than 10%, I think about 12%. Um, uh, I can easily say, and I never give very high estimates ever. So I'll say take 10% uh, and uh, further, uh, we will enhance it further. Last question. Sorry. From last question related to this uh, only. So over the next three to five years, do you think that uh, Peridor can become a globally uh, online seller? Uh, yes, it will be a mix of both. It will be a mix of DIY and online, sir. Uh, in Europe, there aren't many, many people who want online. They have gone to it today because of COVID situation. Uh, internationally, yes, online will be a great, great way. Paradox will grow. Paradox will grow. We have taken Paradox at 140 million top line uh, euro. I think uh, we, we should be hitting the 200 million in the next two years' time and then moving further to 250, 300 million. Paradox is definitely going to grow, and wherever we need, we will add further capex. We are bullish on this. This is the right investment that HL needed to make. We have done it at the right time. We have got it at the right value, and we'll convert it to a far more profitable product. Thank you.
Before we take the next question, a reminder to the participants again, please limit your question to two per participant only, as we have many wa people waiting for their turn. The next question is from the line of Shantanu Basu from Smiths. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the opportunity and congratulations on the wonderful set of numbers. So, uh, I have a few questions. So firstly, uh, can you please give me a breakup with respect to your blocks and panels uh, in your building solution sales for Q3 FY21 and FY20? And I would also like to know the number of dealers and distributors that you have for your polymers business. And uh, I mean, uh, you have talked about uh, the capacity utilization. So what was the using capacity utilization in Q3 FY21? And finally, with respect to Parador, what was the sales from outside of Germany and Austria? Hello? Hello? Requesting participants to please stay online. Uh, we just lost the line for Mr. Dhiru Proy Chaudhary. We are just trying to reconnect him. Okay. Requesting all the participants to please stay online. We are just trying to reconnect the line for Mr. Dhiru Proy Chaudhary. Requesting you all to please stay connected. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for patiently holding the line. We have the line for Mr. Dhiru Proy Chaudhary reconnected. So we have the question from the line of Mr. Shantanu Basu. You may please go ahead with your uh, question. Mr. Shantanu, I'm so sorry I got disconnected from the call. Would you mind to repeat your question, please? Of course, sir. Of course, sir. So I have a few questions. So the first question is with respect to uh, the breakup between blocks and panel sales in your building solution for Q3 FY21 and FY20. And the second question is with respect to polymers. I would like to know the number of dealers and distributors that you have for your polymers business. So if you can give the breakup for this current quarter, for pipes and companies. And what was the recent capacity utilization for the current quarter? And finally, with respect to Paranor, what was the sales contribution from outside of Germany and Austria? Okay, so some of the data, I may not be having it immediately with me, Shantanu, so I would request you to reach out to us, um, especially on the Sales Connect of Polymers. That data is not with me. For blocks and panels breakup, I can say blocks is about two-thirds and panels is about one-third of the revenue. Uh, that's roughly how it is. And uh, so far as rating is concerned, I think, your, uh, sorry, your question on routing was uh, on capacity utilization. We are about 70% utilization as in quarter three. Uh, okay. So Parador, um, uh, we have definitely utilized the available opportunity within Germany and Austria extensively um, during the COVID situation because opportunities of going international was 
um, as low as negative males, and therefore um, uh, about 58 to 60 percent of the volumes have uh, come from Germany uh, and Austria um, uh, during this time, and uh, uh, the rest of them has come primarily from Europe and apart from international circuit. Uh, so Germany, which was normally about 50 percent, has gone up by a few percent uh, during this time. And uh, but Europe has also gone up uh, because and that's yeah, how Canada has grown while internationally, internationally we haven't grown. Uh, what was the figure from the rest of Europe? So uh, Germany and Austria was uh, uh, you know from about fifty percent we went up to about fifty eight percent this year uh, as a total of revenue and from the others uh, we came down from about fifty percent to about forty two percent. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you very you. much, sir. The next question is from the line of Nikhil from Simple. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, good morning. Uh, am I audible? Hello. Yes, very clear, Nikhil. Yeah, hi. Uh, sir, congratulations and a great set of numbers. And uh, I think the efforts of last four or five years is clearly shown in uh, this quarter. And congratulations to the team for that. Uh, just one question I have on Parador. Uh, I sense you are, you are much more uh, confident on the growth and the margin trajectory in Parador now versus what uh, you've been communicating over the last two, three years. Uh, and uh, on the, do you believe that the new product changes or the new uh, in uh, new uh, product introductions which the company has brought in can change the way the growth which we were seeing for Parador globally can accelerate much faster than what your idea was during the time of acquisition, if you can share any thoughts. Okay. So, uh, first of all, um, let me just uh, uh, polish your question a little bit by saying I was always very bullish on Parador and I continue to be bullish on Parador. The reason that was the reason why we went for Parador. The reason is very clear. They are a very, very high-end brand. Uh, they have a fantastic product, which is well-established. They have some wonderful interior designers that are working with them continuously to develop newer products. And the likes of Habi Tirani and others, I mean, you get into the net, you'll know they are the world-class designers who are working with Parador. And therefore, that product and that business is definitely something that everyone should eye for. So, uh, so uh, I'm still bullish, and I was. Now, the question is, have I become more bullish? Am I giving up a uh, higher trajectory on Parador? Look, my intention is that first we utilize the full capacity within Parador. We are about 70% utilization there. There is a far more capacity available. But that, for that, we'll have to get into international regime. And uh, those were all fit for the last nine months or into COVID. Um, that was not desirous, but uh, we couldn't do anything about it. But now we will do it as COVID relaxes and this growth is definitely going to come. And any new product that is a normal process in Panadol that we continue to develop, as I said, 50% of the revenue every three years changes and comes from new products. So Modulo 1 uh, was one new product which was launched after we took Panadol. Uh, in the year 2019, and it has already worked miracle for us in the of growth and actually taken away a lot of losing market that we have from other products uh, because of uh, competition. And there are plenty of other products that we are making. For instance, in in um, other countries, they want uh, highly uh, you know uh, sensitive products to water, termite, and all those things. They do not want uh, similar products, so we are developing those products now, and they'll soon be launched, and you will hear about them if you're following Parador. They are very active in uh, digital med uh, media. You can follow them. We have launched a new digital medium called One, Wo One, um, uh, One World. Uh, sorry, Ajay, can you correct me? Is it One World? or It is One Ground. Sorry, Ajay. One ground, and uh, if you get into again Parada, you will see it. One ground is a fantastic digital uh, uh, proposal that we have done there. We've gone into different pockets of the world and gathered speed in understanding what their requirements are and the products are being designed for that. So all of that is getting done there. 
Uh, believe me, we have a very, very exciting uh, future for Paradox, but COVID has halted a little bit. It will soon come back. Okay. And last one thing on the uh, revenue target of a billion dollar you mentioned, uh, would it mean that we would have to add uh, one more product line or probably with uh, polymers and building solution and uh, Parador, we can uh, easily approach that uh, billion dollar kind of revenue what we are believing to achieve. Because the potential of each of the... Sorry, uh, because the potential of each of the segments... This is a subject we are continuously uh, debating. One billion is not my target, thankfully. It is a target from the team, and I own it as much as the team. Uh, and therefore, I have more reasons to believe we'll achieve it. Uh, roofing uh, can do finite growth for us, uh, but we are trying to add a few more uh, uh, products in that. That's, again, in the strategy of work at the moment. You'll soon hear as, as we come to the street with that. Um, building also will grow, and uh, polymer will grow exponentially, and our aim is to take roofing uh, ahead of 1,000 crore, polymer to 1,000 crore, uh, building solution maybe about seven 800 crore. Paradox will definitely grow um, immensely, and then wherever there is a need, we will add more because our dream is to become one-stop uh, solutions for building that dream uh, take us to wherever we want to. Sure. So thanks a lot and uh, best of luck. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kush Kankwar from KPMS. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. My first question is on uh, roofing. Uh, so considering we compete with steel uh, uh, sheets uh, and considering the rise in steel prices, uh, do we anticipate a favorable environment in terms of price hikes for the uh, upcoming uh, season? Absolutely, yes, is the answer. Okay, and the current differential would be uh, uh, significantly higher versus uh, normal, uh, considering the rising steel prices? Sorry, your question is, how much would be the increase? No, the, uh, yeah, so so the current differential between steel sheets and uh, asbestos sheets would be significantly higher than the normal uh, difference uh, in uh, previous years. A very difficult for me to project uh, the rise in steel prices as it, that will, uh, as it will be next year, but uh, definitely if steel prices rises, our uh, asbestos prices also rises and volume also comes more to us. Okay, okay. Uh, and the second question is on the flooring uh, division. Uh, so basically, uh, what we understood was that at uh, full capacity utilization, you would be able to do 1600 uh, crores of top line. Uh, but current quarter, uh, the top line is around 400 crores and we are at still at 73% utilization. So, uh, uh, so is there has there been any significant increase in realization or am I missing something over there? No, no, you are getting it absolutely right. You're right. About 200 million euro would bring us to full capacity in this, uh, which is about 1600 crore in the present context. We have got a better price realization because of the product mix that we have changed, as I mentioned. So, therefore, if that product mix can be pushed further, and that's where we are going for, we are trying to take Paradon into a far more efficient model than it, what it was historically last 10, 15 years. And I think that will continue. Therefore, we can generate more revenue from new products, and uh, that will continue to help us in the profitable growth of Paradon. And because I pour it close for the current quarter, uh, line, and if you multiply it by four, then we are at full capacity. But so basically, the price reduction has been huge, and if we continue that, then we can do say about 50 million at current in the current product mix funding. Um, we will hope for the best. Uh, yes, you are absolutely. Right. Numbers say that. Uh, let's see how we are able to grow. So it all depends on the product mix, and when we go into international market, it also depends on how that market, uh, uh, you know, uh, absorbs the product. Uh, 
Uh, and my last question would be on uh, polymer. Uh, so basically, the current margin uh, have increased significantly, partly due to scale and partly due to uh, the benefits uh, which the industry has got. So my question was: uh, once we increase say, uh, uh, our scale and top line, uh, do we expect the margins to improve even from current level? Our anticipation is when we are able to reach a 400 crore level, uh, we should be at least at 15 percent with the margin, um, and uh, that's how the team is uh, trying to move forward. As in, as we push more material, polymer is all about pushing more material, making it more efficient. Margins definitely go up. All small players. Who are at 200, 300 crore are less, very less profitable. While the big guys who are 1,000 crore are high profitable. Uh, we have to reach those levels, and we do. And considering, sir, the uh, uh, gains from uh, so uh, the pressure which the unorganized players or smaller players are facing in polymer division, do we expect the uh, to scale up quickly versus our earlier targets? Uh, because that has become a little easy to for branded players to gain scale and market share. Our attempt will be to uh, ramp up the production as much as possible and the business. Uh, we are keeping ourselves very well aware of the market and we'll take all opportunity that comes out. Sure, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Viraj Mehta from Smart Investor. Please go ahead. Uh, if you can throw some light in terms of what is the proportion of colored uh, sheets and how has it moved in the last couple of years? Uh, no, uh, so uh, Mr. Mehta, we, I mentioned the colored sheet in response to uh, the non assessors uh, roofing. We have just launched uh, asbestos colored sheets from January this year. Uh, and that's only a very small part of our business. So that will need to be ramped up further. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Atabi, individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Hello, sir. Good morning to you. Good morning, sir. How are you doing? Oh, I'm quite fine now. Congratulations for the excellent results. I'm quite happy. Now, I just want to you know, know the, the China country is not impacted that much by this uh, virus, COVID virus. The economy is doing quite well now. How is our business doing in China? Our business has grown already over last year by about 20% in China. And uh, uh, China will take another quarter to stabilize is what I hear, but we are very bullish about it. A few things that we have done in the China model are as follows. Number one, we have made a joint venture and therefore the investment for POS, which is point of sale, which is very much needed for the retail uh, flooring segment, is all being done by the joint venture and therefore we are not spending any money more in China. That is point number one. Point number two is, as the business is growing, it's now profitable in China, and therefore we are not uh, we are absolutely in a profitable model. Point number three is, we have already gone ahead and set up 4040 POSs in China, in different cities, which means that the brand is being looked at very well there. Point number four is, they have an excellent middle class look uh, there in China, and uh, Middle class, uh, uh, you know, crowd there looks forward to brand, and therefore we have a good aspiration for ourselves. We would grow in China. We have a fantastic railway track, which is from Germany to China, direct railway line, and therefore our uh, product supplies are flawless from Europe. Uh, this is a very good model. I am very hopeful that this uh, JV will pick up very soon as COVID uh, gets better. Okay, because China, since you have moved to China, uh, do you have any plans for you know, um, uh, marketing these products in countries like South Korea, Japan, or Australia, like New Zealand, like that? 
Australia, we have already jumped in. And I think as we sit today, we have taken 16% market share in Australia already. We are looking at other uh, other Southeast Asian countries as well. Um, and we are not going to feel shy getting into any as uh, we get a profitable business there. Okay, sir. That's all from my side. Congratulations again to you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of VP Rajesh from Banyan Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for taking my question and congratulations, and, um, Mr. Chaudhary. You said your target is to get one billion revenues yes, uh, by two zero two five. Audio is not clearly audible, I'm sir. I'm missing your word. I'm missing is your word. better now, Mr. Rajesh. Hello. Am I audible now? Hello. Yes, you were audible yes. even earlier, but it was just breaking down. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll try again now. Um, so my question is, when you were talking about a target of billion dollar revenues by 2025. Um, are you assuming all it to be organic growth or are you assuming an acquisition somewhere between now and then? So everything may not come from organic growth. We will definitely try for organic as much as possible, but inorganic will not be ruled out. Okay, great. Thank you and all the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference back to the management for their closing comments. Over to you all. Thank you very much, time. everyone. Thank you very much for uh, taking this call and coming over and asking questions about your company. We are always very transparent to discuss everything that uh, you need to know about your own company and uh, our investor cell uh, is very much there to answer every bit of it we value your continued interest and support in HIL um, and uh, hope that you keep yourself safe and all the best and look forward to seeing you sometime soon thank you thank you on behalf of HIL limited that concludes this conference thank you all for joining you may now disconnect your lines